presentation. She was from Santa Barbara, and she'd seen the brain imaging. And this guy uh, was a software engineer, and he was about ready to lose his company. It was all mixed up. And so we did the brain scans in D.C., came down to see me in Virginia Beach, and we went over the entire situation. Very, very interesting. This was a guy who had significant immune dysfunction, you know, this the typical, uh, at decreased frequency. A lot of these folks don't have a change in bowel function. I do have to be careful about that with your um, knowledgeable audience because, uh, you know, some people have no bowel problems but really do have immune dysfunction anyway, uh, and, and a high percentage of them have silent celiac or si silent issues because the bowel still is, they're still having, uh, you know, once or twice a day um, activity, uh, and yet they can still have an immunity. Anyway, so he was at like every other day or every third day, and he came in from Santa Barbara, and a very interesting guy came in with his wife, and he was on, get this, he was on something like, and I'm vague about this because it's it'd been a while, but he's like something on 40, 60 milligrams of Lexapro. Wow something like 80 milligrams of Prozac, and he was on like 80, 100 milligrams of uh, Adderall XR. Wow. Now, and he was on something, uh, some other mood stabilizer as well because they decided he was bipolar. I couldn't, I can't remember what, the, that was probably Depakote, which is one of my least favorite medications because it blocks everything. I'm really into cytochrome P450 and drug interactions and all that, and and so so he was on this, montage of drugs that was just unbelievable. And of course, when you looked at his brain, his brain looked like the diffuse cortical hyper, hypoperfusion. He had some other things going on. But the bottom line, he looked from his brain imaging like he, he did have ADD. And we went through the whole business of what was going on with his immune dysfunction. And we did discover something there. But the real interesting thing is, why did this guy not have serotonin syndrome when he was on so many serotonergic drugs mixed together and furthermore one of the things that was really going on it was really important is that he had the Prozac on board which is a significant uh, cytochrome P450 2D6 blocker it blocks Adderall, Vyvanse, all the amphetamines so he was completely toxic on amphetamines based on the interaction with the Prozac he was also way, way overdosed on serotonergic agents. And he was just twitching in the office. He was just, his leg was moving, he was twitching, and he was demented. He couldn't talk. He thought he was suffering. One of the reasons he, he paid for the brain scans, he thought he was getting Alzheimer's. Okay, now this guy was totally drugged beyond belief. And when we actually got into it, he had an immune dysfunction. He had a, there was a, a problem with, um, and I'm, I'm vague on this, it was, it was either wheat or milk or both, but the bottom line is we did the neurotransmitter testing with him with neuroscience. And the reason he didn't have a problem with um, serotonin syndrome, uh, and in fact one of the reasons he wasn't completely psychotic on the dopamine, ex excess dopamine with the Prozac backing up the Adderall, was that he had no neurotransmitters on board based on the immune dysfunction. He had, so, you know, so he had no serotonin, no, no dopamine. I wouldn't say no, but he was extremely low. Right. So he couldn't have a reaction to anything because he had no neurotransmitters in the first place. And so he was a happy duck because we got him squared away, got him off all that junk and slowly moved him around and tweaked him a little bit with this and that. And he's, you know, I don't talk to him anymore. He's, we finished with him, you know, a year ago. He's just a happy guy because we, I see him, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm hesitating because I think I talk to him every six months. He, he just wants to talk to me and see how things are going, but, but um, you know, every six months they kind of they're already on their own, and he's got he's got a person that he's following out there. But it was very interesting to give him the neurotransmitter precursors, which made a significant difference in his ability to respond. And then we could do it because they could, in fact, be metabolized because of the fact that his gut was working well. And that's the key point: if the gut is compromised by the immune dysfunction. You can give them neurotransmitter precursors, amino acids, supplements, whatever you want to give them. They don't work. I'm sure you've experienced this, Peter. You, you, you can do everything that you would intuitively or even from a point of view of good evidence from metametrics or wherever. 
uh, from neuroscience, they don't work unless you get the underlying immune uh, system corrected. Absolutely, have yeah. Have you seen uh, that, Peter? Totally. Uh, I, that's actually one of the first protocols that I, that I try to embark on is, is um, if I suspect a gut uh, permeability or, or uh, damage, then we want to we want to work to get that corrected first and foremost, so that we can correct their nutrition. Yeah, uh, just a fundamental uh, baseline, I guess you could say, treatment protocol. If you don't correct that, then it's very hard for any treatment protocol to work. Yeah, that's that's where I am with it. I mean, it's just, and I think if you're informed about immune system dysregulation, it has to be number one. Absolutely. You, know, you, you think of number one. If you think of number one and you do number one, everything falls into place even a week after that or two weeks after that. I mean, that's a, uh, it doesn't happen with everybody that way because there are some that are so damaged it takes longer. But, you know, and, of course, if you have adrenal dysfunction as well, we measure adrenal dysfunction and, and uh, look at the hormones. And basically one of the things we see that's the most difficult to turn around is the combination of uh, immune dysfunction with chronic adrenal dysfunction, really a um, low, uh, you know, low functioning adrenal, both on adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. Um, Takes a long time. That's a long time. That's just going to be, we just, I tell them, look, it's going to take you a year, maybe a year and a half. I have a patient from Atlanta that flies up to see me every six months from Atlanta, and he's, he was a uh, ex-Navy pilot, and they flew commercial. He was a fourth degree black belt in taekwondo had been knocked out a couple times a very interesting man's man gq you know um, chiseled kind of guy you know guy's guy completely shot and unable to move and we went through and and he, he took a year and a half before he actually started turning over and actually getting his energy back and getting his brain back because he had just burned and burns adrenals uh you know almost entirely out uh, and so everything we did that we were uh, we could give it to them, but the two issues are the the adrenal if the adrenals aren't working they don't come around, and if the immune system dysregulation is is not correct that they don't come around. Those are the two two most frequent uh, issues that we see for the for the kind of chronic care situation. 